Okay, we'll get started. We'd like to welcome the 2014 Crown Plaza Invitational at Colonial Champion Adam Scott into the interview room. Adam, what a week. Uh, began by becoming the uh, number one player in the world and you capped it off in great fashion today. If we can just get some uh, comments on, uh, on uh, everything that took place today. What a round. Yeah, it was uh, a great week for me no matter what. And, uh, you know, it's, it's another experience, learning experience on how golf is to get off to such a poor start on Thursday and kind of claw my way back day by day into this tournament uh, with some really lots of good golf out there it was so satisfying and uh, there's so many ways to get it done and today was just another way uh, an example of that so uh, you know to win here is a real honor it's a great track it was a test for me you know to scale back and and stay patient and just pick my way around this golf golf course and uh, very satisfying to come out on top today and quite an accomplishment to become the first player to ever win all four PGA Tour events in Texas. Yeah, I think that's pretty neat deal, the Texas Slam. That's a good slam to start with. I'll see if I can find some kind of other slam eventually in my career. The less start here is a great spot. I've really enjoyed playing in Texas and uh, yeah, something about the golf courses and the uh, the terrain and even the, even the dirt, it it's, reminds me a lot of places back in Australia, so that's certainly a level of comfort. Okay, we'll get started with questions. Art? Adam, uh, on the third playoff hole, it was gap wedge on the approach shot? It was a pitching wedge. Pitching wedge. Mm -hmm. Any different than what you had uh, two holes previous when you were there? It was two feet from my divot the first time around, so it was exactly the same. Uh, and, yeah. Felt had a good feel for it, obviously, because I'd hit the shot just 10 minutes beforehand and uh, you know, brought my aim in a little bit from the last time around and just had a, a, a much calmer swing. You know, obviously, going out in the first playoff hole, you're a little jumpy and a little jacked up, and the first one was uh, a little bit of adrenaline and, and not the smoothest wedge I've ever hit. Talk about the second playoff hole, though. Obviously, Jason had just put one four feet, and you had faced one you had pretty much had to make to make it to one. You know, just talk about that and that hole, and just carried it on. Yeah, well, I got aggressive with my second shot there because I knew uh, Jason's going to hit a good shot uh, sooner or later. He's one of the best ball strikers out there, and it was just probably an eight or a nine iron for him. So it's right in his wheelhouse, and uh, I hit a good shot in there. It was just a little bit long. But once he hit his shot, it, it's pretty much do or die for me. I've got to make it. He's got a four-footer up the hill. He's going to make that 99% of the time, you know. And uh, I, you know, I think you draw on experience. And I've been in a fair few playoffs in my career and, and some match play situations where you've, you've got those putts where you make it or you go home. And that kind of had that feeling. And sometimes you make them. And that was a good one to make. You mentioned a little bit this earlier, but can you talk about kind of readjusting your game to this course? You hadn't been here in a while, and then it was kind of a challenge for you. Yeah, it was a challenge for me. I think it, it tests my patience a little bit, and it demands a lot out of my game. And uh, I came into this week looking to try and find some rhythm on the golf course, and it may not be the easiest one for me because um, I don't get to free swing at drivers all day long, which is what I kind of like to do to find a nice rhythm. But, uh, you know, it's testing my game for where it needs to be, I think, in the upcoming months. Uh, a lot of irons off tees, chasing it down fairways. I think potentially that could hold me in good shape as we look forward to the US Open and the Open Championship. And, uh, you know, it's all stuff you can store up and hopefully draw on experience in the next couple of months. Uh, speaking of testing your patience, how, how did you maintain your patience after the double bogey? What was your thought process there? Yeah, yeah. I, I played such a nice opening eight holes and then to double nine, I, I felt like I had a good tee shot and it was just offline and got in a bad spot and then didn't recover great. Then to three putt, it was just throwing shots away and usually you can't afford to do that out here. Uh, but. I felt if I played a really solid back nine, which I had a couple times this week, uh, you never know. After the 11th, there's no real easy chances out there. You're going to have to create a chance or make something happen, and it's not an easy course to, you know, just birdie in. So.
so I felt like if I could just post a number, and obviously Jason did beforehand, but if I could just get it in the clubhouse in front of the people behind me, then I'd be in with a good chance because uh, a lot of risk where the pins were today if you start flag hunting. All right, let's go to the back. He took my question, but I'll go ahead and ask about the Texas Slam. Now you have the plaid jacket. How about cowboy boots and cowboy hats? You got that for the Texas Slam? Well, I got the boots over in San Antonio when I won, so I got that. Uh, but maybe, maybe they should give out a hat at one of the others, and then I'd be, look, I'd be looking the part. I got a belt buckle today too, so I'll be looking good tonight in Fort Worth. <laughs> Adam, talk about um, how special this win is, especially it's the first win you've locked in since being named the number one ranking golfer in the world. Yeah, it's uh, it's a good feeling and and uh, maybe some validation, uh, you could say. But, uh, you know, winning any golf tournament is very difficult out here. They don't come easy and uh, yeah, I had a chance earlier this year and I let it slip and uh, to kind of get in with a chance with a couple holes to go today I didn't want to let this one slip so I played hard and um, you know I was really happy with where my game was at and to, there's always a bit of luck involved and to come out on top uh, is a really satisfying feeling and hopefully kind of keeps me at number one for at least another week. Uh, follow up on that. Being ranked number one, did it affect you at all? Was it something you were aware of, especially on Thursday? Uh, I, I guess there's, it's a new experience, so it was certainly on my mind, or you know, I was having to speak about it a lot this week, leading up to teeing off, and uh, maybe added a little pressure to myself, trying to play like a number one. Um, but I think the important thing was I realised that didn't mean playing perfect and uh, I certainly didn't play perfect all week this week, making a few errors, but it's the way you come back and get it done and, you know, to me I felt like uh, I certainly played like one of the best players in the world out there on the back nine and, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm trying not to put too much pressure on myself to <laughs> have to go and win every week to stay number one. Okay, we're back over here and then Shane. Maybe related to the previous question, you were sitting right on the cut line halfway through Friday. What changed at that point from then on? Uh, I made a few less mistakes, but I was moving in the right direction. You know, I was four over after nine holes on Thursday. So even though midway through Friday I I was on the cut, I'd still I was playing better than I started and uh, moving in the right direction. And you know. I, I just knew that I had to hit some good shots on the back nine uh, Friday and sometimes when you do hit the good shots playing on the cut line because you're a little edgy about um, what's going to happen over those holes, you can take some confidence, maybe as much as hitting a nice wedge into the last on a playoff hole um, because again you're in that situation where you do or die, you go home if you don't hit good shots on Friday and uh, that might have given me a little confidence going into the weekend to free up and try and play some good golf around here. Let's go Shane and then Mike. Adam, does it feel like a personal test to you every time you come under pressure again in a tournament like this <clears throat> or is there a part of you that says, well I've won the Masters so I've already tested myself under these circumstances or is it new every time? It, no, there's something new every time but the experience is great to go in uh, to a playoff after having won a Masters playoff, you know, certainly uh, gives you an element of confidence to know that you can go out there and hit good shots under pressure when it is do or die. And uh, but you learn something every time you're out there, and I learned something again today. And in some ways, it was nice. It went back around to 18, and I had the same shot again, and I did a much better job. And I, I felt. You know, to control my nerves and, and bring my aim in and hit kind of a soft wedge nicely uh, is not an easy thing for me to do under pressure because I'd rather hit a full hard shot and uh, so you know you feel like your game's improving and I can use that experience the next time around when I'm feeling like I don't want to hit that soft wedge I know it, but I know I can. Adam you've talked about the, the Texas Slam but when you won in San Antonio in 2010, 
did you think about it? Did you even realize it? Did you kind of think in the back of your mind that hey, maybe at some point I'd like to get Colonial? Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, I think after that, someone made the point that uh, no one's ever done it, and obviously I had a chance to do it. So I, I played here in, in eleven. I think was the last time, and you know scheduling is always difficult but with such a great golf course I knew I'd be back and uh, you know as soon as I made the decision to enter last week it was on my mind I thought it'd be a neat thing to do um, you know I'll take any kind of record I can get <laughs> um, Adam would you share your thoughts on the legendary golfer behind this tournament Ben Hogan and is this a tournament you look forward to continuing to play yeah, absolutely. This is uh, a golf club steeped in history uh, of the game and, and certainly with Ben Hogan. I was on the first tee today counting up his wins on the wall. It's incredible. It's like that everywhere you go with Ben Hogan or every trophy that you see is kind of like that. And uh, so that's a nice feeling, you know, for everyone to be involved in this event. They're involved in a part of golf history, really. Uh, and, you know, you... We all have to thank these guys who came before us and make golf what it is today. Okay, take a, a couple more. Bill? Can you talk about the putt on the second playoff hole and how big that was uh, for you? And kind of, he had put some pressure on you by stuffing to like four feet. Yeah, I, like I said before, at, at that point, at four feet, you know he's making it up the hill, so I only have one option, and that's to make it. And you just got to take your time and go through your routine and not hit it till you're comfortable and then put the best stroke on it you can and you'll find out whether you've all your practice that you've done uh, pays off and I feel like my putting has been good this year so there was, was no reason to doubt myself at that point and uh, put a good stroke on that one and on the next one. Did you find anything different when you kind of stepped back and looked at it again on that putt? Was there anything you changed? Make no, just just wanted to be sure. Just wanted to, you know, get a great visual on the starting point of my putt. And uh, like I said, you know, you, you just have to step away if you're not comfortable and and make sure you are, so you can put the best stroke on it you can. Jimmy? Yeah, if you kind of put your hand up before that, kind of as a do you use that as a visual lining device? What is what is that move pre-stroke for you? What does it do for you? Yeah. It's a me method of reading a green uh, called express reading and something I've been doing this year and it, it finds my aim point where I need to aim the putt. All right, anything else? All right, Adam Scott, congratulations once again. Right, thank you. Congratulations. Thank you.